Hello everyone. Welcome back to Gone Home. I was planning on uh, doing some more exploration today of like new areas, but then I decided to instead kind of go back through all of the places I've been. I like to do this every once in a while, particularly before I like go into like new areas that have just unlocked. Kind of do a full sweep through all of the previously explored rooms and everything. Um, the other thing that I've been doing is I, I finally started to create a timeline. Uh, so I went back through and found everything that had a date on it and started to sort of piece together the story in order. Um, and it all started because I was watching through the, uh, the previous videos and I noticed that clearly, <laughs> obviously my passport has a Caitlin's birth date on it which is the 12th of December, 1973. So I started from there. Um, the next kind of important piece of information, there's a TV schedule that shows that February 17th of 1995 was a Friday. So I Googled it to see whether that date was actually a Friday, and it was. So that's kind of cool. So because one date in the game lines up with the right day of the week, it means they all do. So uh, that tells us a couple important things. Well, I don't know if they're important, but it tells us a couple of things. Because I know Katie's birth date, and I know the date that I got home, I can tell you for sure that Katie is 21 years old at the start of the game. And I can tell you that she was born... I can tell you that today is a Wednesday. The day that I'm arriving home is a Wednesday. This is Dad's second book. It's called The Accidental Pariah. The first book that he wrote was called The Accidental Savior, and they both are related to the JFK assassination. Something kind of interesting that I noticed is that both books have the same ISBN on the back. Uh, and that made me really curious, because they shouldn't if this were a real world. Um, so I looked the ISBN up to see whether there was like any kind of Easter egg. Uh, like maybe it would, you know, lead you to, uh, to like a, you know, because there might be a real book with the ISBN. So the, the product, the, the published, pub, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> The publication that actually has this I ISBN in real life is a magazine called Cabinet, Cabinet Magazine, and the issue is about insecurity, and it covers like people with hypochondria and phantom limbs and stuff. So that could be something related, or it could be like you know just totally random, like they picked random numbers. And out of curiosity, like, there are a couple other books that we've discovered in this game that you can pick up and turn around and read the ISBN. So I looked, at a f I looked up a few of them, and they seem to just be totally random publications. Like the, uh, the Benjamin Ammond Killing of JFK book that's in Terrence's study uh, is, like, an airline, uh, some, some book about, like, air travel or something. So they seem to be pretty random. Speaking of the study... Oh, actually, while I'm here, there was another... something I realized I had wrong. This uh, obituary says at the bottom that Oscar's survivors include his nephew, Terrence. So I had been calling this guy Uncle Oscar because I thought something like, said that. So he would be, I guess, like my great uncle. I found on this letter something really weird. I think this might be just like a typo or something in the game. But the letter in here is dated August 10th, 1972. But the letter is postmarked 
January 2nd, 1972. So the, the envelope is postmarked earlier than the actual letter was written. But I think that's a typo because if I turn on um, the overlay text and then look at the letter, it says August 10th, 1972 here, like for the postmark. So I think the image is just wrong. Um, okay, one more thing to look at while we're in here. Yeah, this was the book whose ISBN uh, uh, was America by Air, The Early Years of Air Transportation. So these books, oh, <laughs> yeah, I also had missed this. There's, a, there's another one of these, uh, like, glamour magazines in here. He's like, gosh, Dad. Gentleman magazine. Um, yeah, so here's the, uh, the second... Oh, wait a minute. The Accidental Pariah. No, this is the second book. I forget where I picked up the first one. But I'm, I'm pretty sure the ISBNs are the same. Uh... So all of Dad's books have to do with the assassination of uh, Kennedy. And if I can find a copy of the first one, which unfortunately right now I don't remember where it is. Um, but the little tidbit on the back says that, uh, says that the protagonist of the book goes back to like uh, November 21st, I think, 1963 which is the day before JFK was actually assassinated. I, I googled that too. So the reason that I bring this up is... Like, clearly Dad is super interested in the JFK assassination. He's reading stuff about it. Uh, I think there was like a video, like one of the movies that's in the TV room has something about JFK. Um, obviously, Dad's like note board here is all about JFK. And it makes sense because, you know, he's writing these uh, John Russell books, which uh, are kind of based around the JFK assassination. But what was really interesting to me was... So in, uh, in Sam's story that she wrote in second grade, she mentions a couple of times about how, like, the the nefarious Captain Black says that her, Captain Allegra, who is clearly, you know, Sam's character. Yeah, so Captain Black says, your father were a liar. And then Captain Allegra says, my father was no liar. So this is like a second grade girl writing this. I'm assuming that the reason she's writing that is because her actual father, Terence, was accused of lying. Um, and I'm guessing that that lie has to do with the JFK assassination. Because Dad seems to be totally obsessed with the JFK assassination. I mean, he's writing books about it, he's watching movies about it, he's reading books about it. Um, and, again, if I could find the first book he wrote, it says, like, on the back cover, something like, uh, you know, John Russell knows that the president is going to be assassinated, but nobody believes him. So, I'm thinking that something happened like, uh, Terrence told people that he thought the president was going to be assassinated and they didn't believe him. And, uh, and he was never able to let it go. And then, like, you know, he told stories to his daughters about it. And so second grade Samantha wrote, like, that story in her school about it. I think something like that is going on. Um, much less interesting stuff upstairs. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, just putting together the timeline of all this stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to, to do was see if these actually... I didn't want to do this because if there were, like, journal entries attached, I didn't want them to read while I wasn't recording. I wanted to see whether these uh, magic eye things actually had magic eyes in them. So let's uh, find out. I can do these. Uh, this one is a... Uh, it's a shark swimming to the left and kind of looking at the camera. I'll leave it on the screen for a second. Or I guess you could pause it and look at it. See if you can get it. And then this one here is... Uh, I'm not seeing anything here. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's a, it's a heart. It's like a heart that's coming way out of the screen. A very three-dimensional heart. That's cool. Well, I guess it's got hearts on the background. Kind of a giveaway. The other thing I saw, uh, I have no idea if I read this note. I, I saw it while I was watching my video back, and I didn't remember uh, reading it. So let me do that. Move these pillows out of the way. That's just the one. Yeah, I totally missed this note, didn't I? Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to s on the way to second. It's what all the cool kids are doing. I've decided. Write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw: two cats on a motorcycle. And uh, I guess Sam writes. Oh no, Lonnie writes. Hey, this is a good. Uh, I don't know if this is a different writer. The penmanship looks the same. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the cool kids are actually doing is sending each other pages on their beepers. But we're cooler than them because guess what? They can't put this on a beeper. Two cats on a motorcycle. So, alright, so Lonnie is in purple here. And Sam is in black. Even though the handwriting looks very similar. Uh, and that makes sense because Sam... Sam says that Lonnie was always, like, drawing in her sketchbook or something. So I guess all the illustrations are going to be from her, mostly. Your drawing of cats was so good that I added a background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing, though. Ha ha ha, I like it. How did you know they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish right now. I feel like he would probably have lots of cats. Also, like, his secret shame is he watches 90210 religiously. I'll ask him about it after class. He said he doesn't have cats, and also that he's never watched 90210, but I could see in his eyes he was lying. I guess they're picking on one of their teachers. Okay. Was there anything else upstairs? Oh yeah, there was one other thing. <laughs> this is a funny one. Uh, in my parents' room. There is a condom <laughs> in this drawer. <laughs> and it is brand Nero. Clearly like a Trojan analog. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Let's just put that back. They might need that. Okay. Well, I think that was all of my findings uh, on my, like, kind of second pass through all the rooms. So, uh, when, when next we talk, I will undoubtedly be exploring uh, either the attic or the, uh, or the basement, right? That's what this key is. Yeah, the basement key. So, I will see you then. Bye.